time for the Artist Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor, and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, in and and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to episode 58 for August the 10th, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. I hope you folks enjoy this podcast. On the recommended videos, and these were, this was a recommendation from Constance. Last week, she mentioned a couple called uh, Rafi and Klee. They are a couple working artists that uh, produce video podcasts that we frequently follow, follow. And they are just so full of joy. And we get a kick out of uh, listening to them and uh, their recommendations. So if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com you see the two recommended links, and it is a uh, couple videos from uh, Rafi and Klee. Rafi has written a book, and it's available on Audible, and I have a copy of it, and I'm going to start listening to it here pretty soon. In fact, tonight we're going to uh, play a brief two-minute uh, audio clip from uh, from his book, and uh, he gives some uh, really good advice for artists, and he just blows away the, uh, the gatekeeper myth. And the uh, the snobs. Maybe that's why we identify with them after last week's podcast. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're not snobs. Or at least we try not to be <laughs> and everything. So, um, Diane, um, I assume you got a chance to uh, look at the videos. And uh, what about that first one where he says, uh, you know, is my art good enough? What do you think about that? What's your thoughts about that? Oh, he was, he was, he was talking about um, – if your art needs to have meaning. And I don't necessarily think that it has to have any kind of meaning. I think I think most artists find something they really like or an idea that they really like or um, resonates with them and, you know, create from that point. I don't think, uh, I don't know if I've ever created something where I've had an idea of a certain thing ahead of time and, created to fit that idea that doesn't usually work that way at least not with me that's that's kind um, of way, the way rafi I, like i said yeah if, he, if your art has deep meaning and uh, <laughs> i like the way he uh, he kind of just put it in layman terms and uh where both him and Clee said if you create a piece of artwork it has meaning it has meaning already because you created it it's you it's your uh, yourself is coming into it Constance, do uh, you agree with that? Yes, I do. I think that, you know, I'm stumped. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just out. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Well, well I, I think any time you create, your part of, you, of yourself is going into your work. And you feed, you, um, feed on 
experiences you've had or feelings that you're, you know, of how something that's affected you or memories you have or, you know, some something like that. I think all that comes out in your work and it's how you relate to whatever it is you're creating. Absolutely. That, uh, that's, that's undeniable. Uh, yes, there are uh, artists who, uh, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, artists who want to uh, create art that presents a, a social or political point of view, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, to in order to sit back and say, oh, my art doesn't say anything. Well, it does, actually, because it says something about you or it says something about what you were thinking at the time. You know, why did you, you know, create something? It's like I use his, uh, I love his example of uh, Van Gogh. You know, Van Gogh probably just painted sunflowers because he thought they were pretty at the time. He didn't have any particular meaning behind them. He just painted sunflowers because he liked them. <laughs> of course, the art historians and the art educators, you know, attach, the art critics, they attach meaning to this later on, you know. And uh, well, lucky Van Gogh had, we, they have an archive of his letters to his brother Theo, which was really a, interesting it gave insight to the whys and what for uh and his struggles but um just looking at his at his paintings and everything i i, I honestly believe it's just like like uh Rafi said he just liked painting sunflowers you know and, uh, constance you want to add to this conversation well you know flowers are beautiful and they're colorful and they're out there and every year certain flowers come around at certain times of year and they're gorgeous and why not paint flowers they're just they're you know they're wonderful yeah and they get back to they make people smile all the time we give them to each other for special occasions so why not put them down on canvas you know exactly you can make abstracts out of them you can make you know there's hundreds like, and hundreds of ways like, to paint uh, flowers you know, like diane uh says yeah connecting her brush with nature yeah <laughs> She connects her brush with the flowers and with the, you know, with the grass and the woods and her landscape and uh, sometimes with her goats. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> not, not, not a whole lot. Not very often. They steal too much stuff and it makes yeah. it too hard to work. I don't think I can get out there in the pasture and paint with the, with the donks out there. They would probably steal everything out of the buckets and stuff before I could get done. <laughs> yeah now the second video that was on the list which really i really like there is no roadmap to being an artist and uh he really he actually uh read a little bit the, the latter part of the video was he read from his uh or he played the uh chap uh, excerpt from uh, chapter five of his uh, book because he wrote a book the uh god my mind just went blank it's called the rogues the the rogue <laughs> journey to becoming an artist or something like that or the road i forget what it was yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and i once i found out it was an audible i've got a copy of it so eventually i'm going to uh, get into start listening because the man uh he speaks some common sense you know and both him and Clee, they have said many times in their you know videos. Some people think they're they're getting wealthy and they're getting rich and they're in galleries. No, but they are having fun. They are having the best times of their of their life. You know, working in arts. They they are living the artist life, and that comes across. And that's what Constance said, uh, told me one time. You relate to right, Constance? Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. It's not an easy road being an artist. It's not. But you have to dedicate yourself if that's what you want to do. Then you just have to dedicate yourself to that, you know. And like they said, you know, it's not a straight road. But you just have to get up every day and stay on that road. Some days you're just going to have a hard day. And some days you're going to go, oh, my, why am I doing this? You know, but you just have to get up and greet every day with the fact that this is what I have chosen to do and, and just do it, you know. I actually, I've, uh, I've 
captured a uh, about a two minute clip I'm going to play for you folks uh, from from that uh, uh, from his book. And if I can get this started right, we'll see see if everybody can hear that. There is no roadmap. Can you two hear that? When it comes to pursuing yes. a creative life, there really is no roadmap. There is no fairy dust, no proven method, no magic formula, no Google map address, and no online course that could tell you where to go. There is only you, your imagination, and your backbone. The possibilities are endless when you invoke your creative power as an artist to forge your own path and blaze the trail ahead of you. This is a journey you will need to embark on with the awareness that you are uniquely you. Also, you are awesome. Listen, I'm not saying that you're unique and awesome to try and make you feel better about yourself. Unless you understand that you are the only person that could truly guide you through the plethora of bullshit advice that is floating around out there, you will feel lost and discouraged. Despite people promising 100000 a year if you take their online courses or use their proven methods, when it comes down to it, as a creative, your lasting power lies within your unique perspective. The fact that you see the world and interact with it unlike anyone else is a superpower. That's your machete. But if you don't believe in your superpower, you might as well eat a bowl of frosted kryptonite flakes. Most artist courses and books offer cookie cutter advice that is not going to set you apart. They will teach you how to market your product, but it may drain your creativity in the process. When you follow someone else's path, it may ultimately lead somewhere you didn't want to go. Most courses are helpful, but I'll be honest, desperate artists make easy targets for all kinds of unscrupulous people out there with promises of fame, fortune, and artistic glory. Please be skeptical of anything that seems too good to be true. Remember, proven methods are not roadmaps. They are simply a suggestion and opinion selling themselves as a sure thing. There are no roadmaps in the art world, and as well-meaning as someone may try to be, the fact remains that they haven't walked in your shoes. They have no idea who you are and what you're capable of. They haven't experienced your fears, discouragement, disappointments. They can't predict your struggles because we all struggle with our own insecurities and our own set of roadblocks. Knowing more about marketing strategies is not going to help you with this. So He's telling it just like it is. Yeah, in fact, he sounds a lot like our favorite, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, he says it's says you've got to have perspective. He says put it in perspective. You know, and and uh, um, I've uh, followed enough of. Uh, and I know who exactly who he's talking about when he's talking about the person who who promises a hundred thousand dollars a year. I remember <laughs> coming across that particular person who who uses that strategy to sell their program. <laughs> but uh, no names here. All right. No, I'm not. I don't even remember the name. We, we but I remember I remember remember it. But Oh yeah, they're out there everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh but, yeah. When the, they're out there. There's a lot of them out there, you know, who prey on them, prey on artists. Some of of other uh, Rafi's other videos made me really feel good because when I started for the last 20 years for the folks who don't know this, I've been i've created and i operated an internet radio station which has millions of listeners worldwide i play the uh, nostalgic radio plays called you know, old time radio from the 30s 40s and 50s and before i started this creative journey and trying to be a professional artist at the encouragement of my daughters that was how i used my creativity because see i've been an artist my whole life if i wasn't visual doing visual art i was doing production art in the creation of the shows in the development of of the uh, playlists and the arrangement that takes a certain amount of creativity so i was always using my creativity now when i started this journey i was really really kind of stressed out should i separate from my internet radio station from my art should I separate this as two separate act creative activities? I went through a lot of turmoil with that, a lot of stress. I actually came up with what I called my pop radio art, illustrations based on the old radio shows, which didn't last that long because I was not feeling satisfied. I, my creativity was not 
And on day on days and weeks when I couldn't create my art, I felt guilty that I wasn't painting, I wasn't drawing, because I had to dedicate time for this radio station because it takes quite a bit of time to program the shows and then upload them to the servers and arrange the playlists. Because like I said, I have millions of listeners worldwide. Now, since the COVID crisis has been going on, my listeners have told me that I have become an essential service, that they, they listen to my radio shows to ease their minds and to take the stress off of the, you know, the, the problems with the COVID crisis, you know, the unemployment and whatnot. So I have an even greater responsibility. Listening to Rafi has put that all together and made me feel good because one of his videos, he discussed uh, how his creativity, he loves creating his podcast. He loves tinkering with the videos. He loves, and that is his other form of creativity, using his creativity. So now when I can't draw or when I can't paint, I don't feel guilty anymore. Thanks to Rafi. I am completely fully fulfilled in my creativity like this last week i didn't pick up the paintbrush didn't do any any visual art whatsoever i because I, I had a lot of work with the radio station i had to do and all week long i've been create been uh, creating podcasts and then i was doing a, preparing for a live show so that was still my creativity was still being fulfilled so raffi and cleo Thank you so much. I know you guys don't listen to our podcast. Of course, maybe you might, you know, but thank you. Just that alone helped me personally to um, not feel guilty when I'm not creating art. <laughs> and getting back to when he said there's no roadmap, I truly believe that. Diane, can you identify with that? Does that resonate with you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But there are really is no roadmap at all. I mean, it depends on circumstance. It depends on where your interests are at the time. It, it just, I mean, I've fluctuated between all kinds of different kinds of arts. And I mean, when I first started college, I was, I thought I was going to be a sculpture major and I just ended up switching to printmaking and um, weaving and <laughs> all kinds of, and even after I got out of college, I was, I was working four other artists that were doing fiber arts and I was I was weaving um, screens for antique radios and I was making uh, velveteen boxes and <laughs> I was doing all kinds of crazy things and along with my own art so it was I guess a, a time of exploration and just being creative in all kinds of different ways and um, there wasn't there's there is no like you know, you graduate from college and you're an, an artist, an international famous artist all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, when you walk out the door, it doesn't happen that way. It's yeah. like, you know. Um, and yeah, so. And trying to follow somebody else's path, like he says, it doesn't work. You know, it really doesn't. You, it, it, you end up in frustration. And many, many artists, uh, they just quit. They give it up. They, they just, well, I'm not, I'm not ever going to make any money. I've never yeah, but I think even if they do quit as far as trying to make a living at it, I think there's people that are creative, are creative, like you were saying, if you're not doing your art, you're creative in some other way. You find some other vehicle to use your creativity in, and it's um, even like times when I haven't painted or, you know, done art specifically, I've used my creativity in other ways, making other things or or doing other other things, and I think artists in general kind of um, think outside the box and are a lot more creative than than the normal. I don't say normal people, but <laughs> we're our our brains are wired that we want to we think of alternate ways of doing things, and a lot of people do. Paul and Ron I think no matter what we're doing, we're doing that. Paul Klein said it really well at the start of his course. You know, he says you're an artist you can't help it yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, that, it, that is true you can't help it you're, you're going to you're you're going if you're not painting if you're not sculpting if you're not drawing then you're writing if you're not writing then you're making music if you're not making music 
then you're creating little pottery things, you know, or, or pieces of jewelry, or, I mean. Even if you're not doing art or any kind of craft or anything, even like cooking or just any, in any way that you're, you know, anything you do in life, you're, you're thinking of it more creatively than a lot of people do. And it's just the way your brain is wired. And mm-hmm. it's, my, it's a different my, way of thinking. My two adult daughters, uh, we were, you know, having a conversation one time and, and uh, my youngest daughter went and made a comment. She's just, I, I just wish I could draw or whatever. I'm just not creative. I said, yes, you are. What's <laughs> one thing that you like to do so much? You always tell me about uh, cooking. Yeah. Yeah. You always like to try new recipes that's a creative. and you like to try, you know, different spices and different, you know, flavorings and, yeah, you're right. I said, oh, yeah, you're creative. You know, my oldest daughter, she was, we had the same, similar conversation with her. It was with, with photography. She, she is an excellent photographer and you know, she puts herself down. She knows how to create the perfect composition all of her photos. In fact, I use a lot of her photos as reference for, for my artwork so that I don't get in trouble with copyright problems. <laughs> and she always, you know, every so often I say, Hey, send me some more photos. So she'll send me another batch of photos you know? because she's always taking, taking photos, you know, and everything. So yes, creativity is it's, if it's in your blood, you you know you can't uh, you can't help it. You know, Constance, add some add to this conversation because there's something that I I want to mention that you you have been many times you've talked about you've been struggling. You you know okay you 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 do your jewelry you create your jewelry and then you said you wanted to start creating creating visual art again. You went through a period of what a year ago you was into pastels you know and and. and yeah, but I don't. I do. I've been doing pastels off and on the whole time. Um, a lot of the times, I will do portraits, pastels. I use the portraits, the animal portraits. They seem to just come out better in pastels. They just look more velvety, you know, for animals to the, for their portraits to be in pastels. So I've always done, you know, when somebody's wanted a po- animal portrait, to do it in pastels. But what I, um, what I was getting to is a couple of times you made some comments. Just, Boy, I wish I could paint again. And me and Diane said, well, go for it. Right? Yeah. Church, well, that, I had stopped painting for 12 years, you yeah, know, because now, now you're painting. when I was living in, Flor- living in Alabama on the Florida line, I had just gotten into a desperate place for money. And so there were a lot of tourists there. And so I started making jewelry because the jewelry had started selling. And so I was selling jewelry, jewelry to the tourists and as a way to make extra money. So it eventually just took up so much time that I was spending all my time doing that instead of making art. And so when I moved up here, that ceased to be a thing to do. So I am sitting on a mountain of jewelry that I don't have. I can't move now. <laughs> so I am... Uh, I mean, when it, Raffi talked about crickets, little crickets, that's what I hear at Itsy now. It's just crickets. Crickets, cricket, 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 but Itsy crickets. Are, that's all I hear at Itsy is crickets. I even put stuff on sale and I still hear crickets. You know, it's well, like, I mean, <laughs> so what, what's I don't your, know. What's your Etsy site? Give the address out for our listeners. Uh, it's uh, itsy.com slash shop forward slash, is it forward slash shop? forward slash C Brosnan S B R C B R O S N A N S. And that's, uh, but, um, there are things on sale and I post them on Facebook all the time. Um, I know I try to share them when I, when I catch them, you know? Yeah. I'm gonna, um, and I took the art off of the site because I don't know what happened, but, Itsy is is more expensive to sell art on Itsy than it is at a gallery. <laughs> so I yeah, took we, the art off of Itsy, and I'm not going to sell it there anymore. I'm going to just show the art on Faso and sell it there in Daily Paintworks. Okay. Then we yeah. – uh, yeah, what's your Daily Paintworks side? Go ahead and say that too. I don't – is it Daily Paintworks? I don't know what the – I don't know what the address is there, but if you go to Faso, if you find me on, just type 
my name in on Google. If you Google my name, you'll find my daily paint works in the FASO. Okay. Yeah, because we want <coughs> to get some of that, uh, you know, push some of that out. You know, Diane uh, provided a uh, uh, message for us. In fact, that takes us right up. Let's, uh, let's stop momentarily for a message, and then we'll continue. Hi, I'm Constance Bryson of Steve Bryson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. All right, welcome back to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 58, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And uh, Constance, before we started the recording, you were talking about with this, with uh, about Raffi and Cleo, why you like them. So uh, I told you to hold it until you know the recording. So that they they like to keep it real, you know that when they talk about their journey and their life as artists, that they keep it real. And when they talk about discussing about their art, that they talk about the gatekeepers to the galleries and they just like to keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> Diane, you want to, you want to add anything to that? And we'll about ready to, we'll be wrapping this up here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they talked about not really needing the gallery system as far as um, being a, successful artists and doing things on their own and um, finding their own way through through it and finding alternative places to sell their work and doing sh uh, like shows and um, festivals and things like that um, even selling at local businesses and you know anywhere anywhere you can find a place where they'll show your work for you know where you can hang your work up or, or show your work. And so they've done a lot of odd kind of um, things rather than just going to galleries and selling, trying to sell through galleries. Yeah. And it's been, it's worked for them. So. Yeah. I used to live in their area and I used to do a lot of the shows and things that they did in that area. And that's where I did really well doing what they did in there in that area. But now that I've moved to Oklahoma, it's just like, boom, it's like I hit a brick wall and I just bounced back and hit the ground. So I'm really having to try and find a new way here in Oklahoma. But then COVID hit and then it's like, it seems like it just hit another brick wall. And I just, all of a sudden, you just have to figure out how to do it all over again. It's like traveling through that wooded area that, yeah. that he likes to talk about, you know. So. Yeah, well, that's part of why there's no real um, roadmap because no matter, you know, every place you're, People live in different places. They have different circumstances. They have different um, right. things available to them. You know, so you you kind of have to um, figure that all out for where you live and and the type of art you do. And mm -hmm. it's it's a process. It's not something that's you know, there's, it's yeah. not like a step one you do this, step two you do this. It doesn't yeah, work that way. It's, there's it's, no hard and fast rules for any of this. Yeah, it's it's not going to be laid out for you. You and. Mm -mm. You have to really uh, deep down. Do some serious. You start going down one road. You start listening, hearing crickets. You you have to back up and figure out. You start going in another direction. You, you know, really, so you have to really decide. You know, do I want to? Uh, you know, do I want to pursue this as a career? And am I willing to uh, put the effort in? And it is. It, it's a. It's a lot of effort. I mean, what I really attracted me about those two, and, and the reason why I uh, follow them quite a bit is they admit they freely admit hey people think we are making all kinds of money that we're nice we're rich you know and no he he they both said you know Clee, Clee jump yells out there's sometimes months months will go by before i sell a piece of jewelry because she does most of jewelry you know makes jewelry and uh then rapid said yeah i don't sell a painting all the time you know and i 
I, I do commission sometimes and then I have commissions. They don't want it afterwards. So these are all that my conscience says they keep it real. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. You know, I might go for a month and not sell anything on Etsy, but then I'll turn around in the next month. I might sell some stuff on eBay and I might some sell a couple of things on Etsy, you know, and then I'll turn around and I'll sell some for three or four hundred dollars on Etsy. And, but then again, the, for the next two or three months, I might not sell anything on Etsy. I mean, so that's just how the cookie crumbles in this. You just have to be willing to hang in there for the for the duration. You know, if this is the life you've chosen, this is it. You know, and that's you just what, have to hang in there. That's what attracts me to those two. They, they, they're they're honest. They keep it real, and they're happy. They're happy. They are living the creative life. And that's, that attracts me because that's what I'm doing. I'm living the creative life. And like I said, I, I went through a, a period of stress, you know, because oh, I got my internet radio station I've got to do. I've got my drawings. I've got, uh, you know, and it was causing me stress. Now, no more. No more stress. One week when my radio station needs a lot of work, I'll work on that. And then the next week I'll knuckle down and do, you know, two or three paintings. And, um, so that's, you know, that's the way it goes. Speaking of that, before we close up, we haven't done this in a while. Let's set a goal for next week. All right. Constance, what, it doesn't have to be anything big. What's going to be your mini goal to, to get completed by next week? Mini goals. I had already written down in my date book that I was going to try and paint every day this week. Now it's Monday and I haven't done a painting this week yet. But, but there's the but. I have got moved back into the studio. Yes, yes, yes. The last two days I've spent two solid days getting moved back in the studio and getting it cleaned up after not having air conditioning out here for two weeks. I'm back in the studio, yay! So I can start uh -oh. painting again. Yes, it's conducive. It's yeah, it's conducive to painting. So yes. So you're, so you're going to commit to at least doing one painting this week, then, okay? No, at least three. three at least three or four. <laughs> three or four, okay. Then by Monday we'll check up on you. Diane, what are you what All right. are you commit to for for this week? Um I've been working on two little paintings, so I'm gonna try get try to get them finished up this week. Okay. All right. And I'll tell you what. Uh me, I'm also going I'm gonna to, to commit to doing at least three paintings. Uh probably two of the lessons for the you know, Kelly Folsom lesson and then one independent. And all three of us, let's take photographs <laughs> and send them to me so I can get them on the, the uh, YouTube version of the podcast. Okay. So we can let people know that we do hold each other accountable when we make these goals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Sure. Does that sound okay. like a plan? Yep. All right. All right. Let, let's wrap up this episode. You have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 58 for August the 10th, 2020. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I have been talking with uh, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, my two best artist friends, and we have made our commitment. So you listeners, you hold us accountable, too. If you don't see those paintings, <laughs> you can say, we're, we're there's three people full of crap. <laughs> no, I'm sure you won't. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say uh, goodbye to Constance and Diane. But, oh, before I say that, I, Constance, uh, Diane always reminds me, please, wherever you listen, wherever you hear this podcast, please give us a positive star rating and a thumbs up. If you like what you hear, give us some love. We appreciate that. And don't be afraid to send comments, you know, or send an e email. And if you would like to participate, cjkl at sign mystery dash otr dot com. cjkl at sign mystery dash otr dot com and say, Clyde, I want in. Yeah. We'll let you. We'll let you in. So, good night, Diane. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks, and thank you so much for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists. Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. 
Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.